welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you today? Pretty good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. I had um, allergy shots today, so. Oh, yeah. So, so you're so you're not 100% then. No, not my best day. I'm kind of tired. Yeah. Um, they had mostly stopped making me really tired, but it, it, hit, it hit me today. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, well. That's probably why my scro- my 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 scrot's a little thratchy. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> that sounds like a horrible experience. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> my throat's so, a little scratchy. Yeah, that's what I mean to say. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's just move right on past that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to what? I don't know what 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 you got. What's the top thing on your list of notes there? Well, I thought that we would pick up immigration again because we didn't get to talk about it very much last time. It's always a fun subject to discuss. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. Do we actually just like start with that clip? We can. I mean, that may kind of get us going. I mean, that seems like a good place to start. Okay, so yeah. this was Stephen Miller on the Megan Kelly Show podcast. And Stephen Miller was the communications director for... Our guy, uh, Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Um, our guy. <laughs> Which we, we were just <laughs> discussing before we got on the podcast how much we loved him. <laughs> yeah. You, you can't see sarcasm on a podcast, so. Yeah. Um, we were both discussing how we would disown him if we could. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah. Uh, and we were both kind of discussing how our family really liked him. Yeah. Like both of us. Yeah. like Because it was, it was that way. My family always all for some Jeff Sessions. Like, it's, that's, that was the guy, you know. He represents us. But. I never felt that way. Like yeah, his I two his two biggest issues was immigration, which he was bad on. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I'm not I'm not an open borders guy, I still felt like he was in the wrong direction on immigration. Yeah. And his other thing was drugs. He was a anti. He was a, a drug warrior. Or what do you call it? Yeah, a drug warrior. Yeah, he's a drug warrior. He's uh, he said that um, dealers should be uh, should get the death penalty and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's... he was he was very he was uh, extreme even for people who were like anti drug. He was extreme. Like, yeah. So, yeah, um, never was a fan. So this guy, Stephen Miller, was his uh, communications guy, and um, I guess he did some speech writing for Trump or something. I'm Sounds not entirely way. sure Yeah. Uh, about his connection to the Trump um, administration. Yeah. Yeah. I like I've been so conditioned by the press that I almost said regime. <laughs> the regime. <laughs> the Trump regime. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, um, so this is what he had to say about the dangers of immigration. All right, let's hear it. You have human trafficking, sex trafficking, and labor trafficking, as even the New York Times documented, particularly with minors on a scale that has never been witnessed before. Uh, hundreds of thousands of minors have been trafficked into the country. Uh, you have the fentanyl deaths setting records year after year. Uh, families being separated in a permanent and irrevocable way, uh, where the only way they can visit loved ones is at a cemetery, at a at a graveyard. And then you have gangs that have operational control of our territory that are abusing people and murdering people on both sides of the border, the destruction of the labor market for the working class and the working poor, and the decimation of our healthcare system and our education system, to name but a few social ills. Okay. Um so I, I it's hard to take seriously anybody who still makes the argument that they destroy the labor market. Yeah. The illegal immigration destroys the labor market. I think it's been shown over and over and over again that they have a very tiny impact on the labor market that most of the jobs that um illegal immigrants are taking are jobs that Americans won't well, I do agree with that. Like, so as as far as the um, things he laid out there, like the the labor is the one that I'm like, okay, like yeah. this isn't that's not a serious argument to me. Yeah, um, and and I, I, you know, and I hate to to be like this, but if you're a person that has lost your job because of illegal immigration, like if you have lost your job to a an unskilled person who doesn't speak the language, yeah then maybe you need to develop some skills. Yeah. I mean, I, 
I mean, I like I say, I'd pretty well agree with that. I think that there was some valid things he listed, though, like the impact on schools and like that sort of thing. Like that's always the big one to me is the impact on on the uh, the public schools and that type of thing. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's t- <laughs> and actually that like the healthcare thing yeah. in context of the interview, he actually says later on. You know, and healthcare is important, and we need to make sure that everybody, every American has healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, God, no. Here, here we go like, again with that again. <laughs> yeah, that's worked out well. Yeah. And that's kind of the response that I would have for this also is you think that you think that it's illegal immigration that has destroyed the public healthcare system and the public school system? You think yeah. that's what the problem is? Now, yeah. it may be putting um, additional strain on it, yeah. but the immigration. The immigrants yeah. have not caused the problems. Yeah. They're just helping illustrate them, I think. Um, the problems come from the centralization and, and interference of government to begin with. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a problem from government in general. Mm-hmm. But but I do think that in, in areas where you've had an influx, like border towns and such, mm-hmm. like the immigrants are a big part of the, uh, causing a big part of the problem there with those type of things, with healthcare and with... Um, with the school system. Um, I mean, when you have that many people come into an area that, you know, don't speak the language, like they don't like they're using the, the hot, the local hospital as their primary doctor. Like, yeah. I mean that call, that's a problem. No, I, I get that. But I'm saying that the, it's not the immigrants that are causing the problem. They, yeah. the, the immigrants may be a problem in these things. Yeah. Like it, you may not have the ability to, to, provide for everybody with this influx of immigrants, yeah. but it's not the immigrants that have destroyed these systems. Yeah. I mean, I agree that the systems are broken anyway. Yeah. Like, I mean, I absolutely will agree with you all day long on that. Yeah. And on the child trafficking and sex trafficking and labor trafficking and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, to me, that's, that's the result of the immigration policy. Oh, that's true. Like the immigrants I, aren't I causing that. that problem. That's the yeah. result of the immigration policy. It would be like, um, you know, oh, and actually, as long as we're on it, because it's more or less the same thing when he starts talking about gangs and so forth. That's the result of the drug war again. Yeah. N- not the immigrants. Yeah. It's the it's the oh, result of the that. drug war. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I would say both of those things the the trafficking and the 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 trafficking, including the drug trafficking, the yeah. people trafficking and the drug trafficking. Yeah. Um, blaming that on on the immigrants is like. Um, blaming the gang warfare during prohibition on alcohol. Yeah. No, what alcohol's fault. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you start legalizing these drugs, you get rid of a lot of those problems. Exactly. Um, so I'm 100% with you on that. Um, but the, as far as with the, the people smuggling, with the smuggling of the immigrants, in, I mean, I don't know what you're, I mean, other than just opening the border, what's your solution to that, though? I mean, that is my That is solution. your solution. I just... Yeah. Um, I, the, but there's but here's the problem with that, see, though. Okay, go ahead. So you, you open up the border, and so you start letting all of these people flood in here, and then all of these systems are that we just talked about, the schools, the healthcare, all of that stuff just starts collapsing. I mean, it just it, to me, it just falls back to the, like I said last time, the collapsitarian argument. Well, if we just collapse these systems, we can rebuild them. And that's not something I can support. What I'm saying is it's better than the alternative. So tell me what the alternative is. I mean, I laid out my alternative last time with the sponsorship thing. Like if, if I was okay. pushing the buttons, and, that and would I, be... I would be totally on board with that. But yeah, we both know that that's not what's going to happen. Yeah. I yeah, mean, but, if, if but you were my, pushing but, that we need to control immigration, we need to secure the southern border. Yeah. Okay. How do you think that's actually going to work out? I well, mean, what do you, what do you think the response is actually going to be? What do you think I that can the ask policies the same that are question actually, to you though for the place. open border thing though? Like, what do you think that's actually going to look like? Um, because that's because that's my problem. That's my problem with the open border thing is like, OK, so we just open up the borders and let these systems collapse. Like, that's not OK either. No, I agree. That's not OK either. Um, but what I'm saying is that it's it's better than the alternative, uh, the alternative of what's going to happen. The, OK, so this is the part where um, 
I think that, and so I was listening to Dave Smith talk about this too, right? So Dave mm-hmm. Smith says, oh, you know, I like a sponsorship system. Hey, yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Yeah. Um, like you get to come in if you're invited in. Yeah. Now, I mean, he's, that's, that's kind of where I got my, my thoughts on that from okay. was a lot from what he said, not in the last episode more mm-hmm. recent, but what he said in years past Yeah, is, I mean, that's kind of where that idea comes from for me. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I, and I think that's, I think if you're going to have a correct answer, that's it. And uh, sure. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm okay with that. Now he only talks about, uh, private sponsorship in terms of like people, Saying, "Hey, you can come stay yeah, with but me I or bet whatever." Pressed but on it or or brought yeah, up, yeah, like he would, businesses he would, or whatever. He would allow Somebody's for inviting businesses. people into work and yeah. things like that. Um, the whole idea good. is that you have a plan when you. I think because the idea I've gotten from his take on this is the same mm-hmm. as kind of mine is you need to have a plan when you get here. Yeah, the whole idea that you're just going to show up and expect things to start happening, which is what you're looking at when you mm-hmm. open the border. Well, so but what you. This is what you're looking at when you close the border. Yeah. And I think this is the part, by the way, I, I do want to address that, like his thing about, um, you know, the, uh, a lot of, uh, open borders, libertarians talking about that. Well, you know, public property is everybody can do whatever they want on public property. I yeah. have never, ever, ever made that statement. And I yeah. never would. No. And I know All you right. wouldn't. So I mean, you're, <laughs> that's, I, that's an absurd argument. And I think that he's straw manning the position by doing that. Yeah. But, um, what I would say is that on the other side of it, if you want the government to take control of the border, yeah. the result is going to be that um, y- you have you are further empowering the Department of Homeland Security. I agree. There's going to be a ton of money dumped into Homeland Security, into the Border Patrol, into the U.S. military. They're going to have drones and stuff flying all over the borders. They're going to have a bunch of people down there with guns. And there's already, already, uh, a, essentially... I mean, what a lot of people call a constitution-free zone within a hundred miles of the border. Yeah. Of any border. Any border. Yeah. Right. Like including the 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 liquid border. Right. <laughs> um, now that covers like two thirds of the population of U.S. citizens. Yeah. I mean, we All would right. fall under that. Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah. would he? I think. Yeah. Um, but. All right, let me. I'm gonna pull this from. Um, there was an article I was reading about this from uh, something Whitehead um, at the Future of Freedom Foundation, and I just want to read to you like how this is, what this is shaping up to be, and this is like before there's some kind of crackdown. Yeah, this is the way things have been for some time. Um, according to FOIA documents shared with the Intercept. Border cops even have a checklist of possible behaviors that warrant overriding the Constitution and subjecting individuals, including American citizens, to stops, searches, seizures, interrogations, and even arrests. For instance, if you're driving a vehicle to a border cop looks unusual in some way, you can be stopped. Yeah. If your passengers look dirty or unusual, you can be stopped. If you or your passengers avoid looking at a cop, you can be stopped. If you or your passengers look too long at a cop, (laughs) you can be stopped. If you're anywhere near a border, near being within 100 miles of a border, or in a city, or on a bus, or at an airport, you can be stopped and asked to prove you're legally allowed to be in the country. That's your, like, show your papers, please, stuff that this country has always tried to, well, I was going to say, historically (laughs) tried to. Historically, yeah. Um, If you're traveling on a public road that smugglers and other criminals may have traveled, you can be stopped. Um, if you're not driving in the same direction as other cars, you can be stopped. I don't even know what that means exactly. <laughs> right. Um, you if mean you, you can't to, go the wrong way on the one way road? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one seems reasonable to me. If you appear to be avoiding a police checkpoint, you can be stopped. Yeah. Except for the fact that I don't think that there should be police checkpoints. Sure. <laughs> sure. But that's, that's like a legitimately suspicious activity, I would say. Yeah. Well, um, if you like pull around the corner and there's a checkpoint and you do a Yui. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're coming back for you. Yeah. Um, if you're driving a make of a car that criminal types have also driven. Yeah. You can be stopped. If your car appears to have been altered or modified, you can be stopped. Think how widely that can be applied. Cat's scratching on the chair when he knows I won't yell at him. All right. Um, if the cargo area in your vehicle is covered, yeah. you can be stopped. If you're driving during a time of day or night that border cops find suspicious, you can be stopped. Um, if you're driving when border cops are changing shifts, you can be stopped. 
If you're driving in a motorcade or with another vehicle, you can be stopped. If your car appears dusty, you can be stopped. If people with you are trying to avoid being seen or exhibiting unusual behavior, you can be stopped. If you slow down after seeing a cop, you can be stopped, which everybody does. Yeah. So so uh, so all of the not all of them, a vast majority of the stuff you just mentioned there though mm-hmm. is stuff that goes on regardless. When it, that is like law enforcement 101 as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, well it certainly is here cuz it's I mean it's absolutely well, I mean, even though he, yeah. even beyond here, like I can't imagine there are other parts of the country where the law enforcement doesn't treat you the same way. If mm-hmm. a cop wants to stop you, they're going to stop you. Okay. It doesn't matter. Now imagine that though with three times as much funding. Yeah. I mean, I'm never for, <laughs> I mean, you know where I stand as far as law enforcement is concerned. It's not like I'm like Mr. Policeman over here. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that here's the, here's the real crux of it is that what's not being considered is the problems of enforcement. Yeah. And oh, yeah. the, the problems of enforcement are significant and yeah. not just for, uh, illegal border crossers, yeah. but for us citizens. I yeah. mean, if the goal, if, if our goal mm. is to free us of government control, yeah, then the last thing that we want to do is give the government more power over an area that they can absolutely abuse. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, so I see it as counterproductive to say, okay, well, what we got to do is like in all these other things, we want less government, but in this particular thing, we want government to really step it up. Yeah. Because I think it's counterproductive. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with, with what you're saying here. Mm -hmm. It's the problem is, is I just, I, I can't get behind just an open borders policy. Like it just, I, and I, mm-hmm. I understand what the argument you're making. I mean, it's a compelling one. Like I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not swayed, but it, I get where you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just can't get behind the idea of just opening up the border for the reasons I laid out. And of course, another part of the problem again, centering on government yeah. is our interventions elsewhere. Yeah. Like, okay. So, um, my dad and I years ago uh, were debating about refugees. Yeah. And I was saying that I thought that we should welcome refugees in this country. Yeah. And, um, and he asked me why. And I said, because in most cases, they're refugees because of our government's activity. Yeah. You can trace it back to something we did. Yeah. We destroyed their country or their economy or whatever. And now they're, or, or we empowered a government over their country that was ruthless or what have you. And so like, if you want to not accept refugees, then stop making them. Yeah. I, and and well, it's the I same agree thing with, with the last part of that. Like, stop making them. Yeah. I'm a little more iffy on bringing them all over here, though. Well, okay, but my point here is that it, the same holds true for immigration from across the southern border yeah. in, a, in a lot of cases. So um, they're saying that, like, you know, a lot of the countries that, are, that have immigrants coming up to the U.S. is uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Nicaragua. All right. So in all of those cases, the U.S. has been heavily involved and has created a bad situation, situation in those countries. Absolutely. Um, because of the, the U.S. drug war, Colombia, you know. Is a shithole. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I wouldn't go that far because it's actually not the worst country down there. Yeah. But we have empowered. But it ain't hu- great. We have empowered huge cartels down there because of the of the drug war. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of violence and, and so forth in Colombia because of the drug war. Um, in Honduras and Nicaragua in the last 10, 12 years. Now I'm going to say 12 years because I think the Honduran coup was 2011. Yeah. Um, but the Nicaraguan coup attempt was 2018 and the U S was involved in both of those. Of course, Venezuela, we have, Put oh, yeah. crippling sanctions on and made that country really poor. Now it would have been poor anyway, Yeah. but we have accelerated that to a significant degree by preventing them from, um, engaging in economic activity with anybody around them Yeah. yeah. or anybody at all, really. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, a lot of the, and a, <laughs> like historically, uh, we've been deeply involved in the governments of Guatemala and El Salvador, 
um, and Nicaragua actually too. Yeah. Um, where we have empowered, um, in, in not all cases did they actually take over the government, but we empowered, um, very violent and oppressive people. Yeah. Giving them money, giving them arms. Yeah. Um, and uh, helping just, them either just, to take over the country or to take over the countryside. Yeah. Just meddling in these people's country and making things worse. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, again, this is a lot of problems that we've caused. Now, that's not to say that there wouldn't be any immigration if we hadn't done this. There would definitely still be immigration. But yeah. there'd be a hell of a lot less of it. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, I think that there would. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you could make a living in, in these your other own country. places. Yeah. And... The the other thing is that the the vast majority of immigrants yeah. are people that are just here coming here to work. Oh yeah. No, I agree with that. And and I've got a fair amount of experience like dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, a lot of people that shop at the stores I've worked at like are immigrants, you know. Yeah. And uh, a lot of them don't speak the language. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I've dealt with the language barrier. But you're right, like these aren't people, at least in my experience that are just sitting at home on the couch collecting a paycheck. Yeah. There's small numbers of like real criminals and maybe terrorists. Now, like bringing up a, well, you know, people on the terrorist watch list, like you and I might be on the terrorist oh, well, watch list because yeah. of this. That, podcast. that doesn't mean anything. I mean, like there's me. no yeah. vetting of this list. I mean, yeah. Anyway. Well, and, um, but, but my experience with the people who have immigrated over here, I mean, like, mm -hmm. like kind of like what you're saying. I mean, they may, I mean, they may want to smoke the occasional joint every now and then or something, but does that make them a criminal? Like, yeah, I mean, no. that's, you know, but that's the level of criminality that I've seen at mm -hmm. least. Now, I'm not saying that that's like across the board, but. Yeah. I mean, another thing about this guy, Stephen Miller, talking about like, well, one thing he wants to do is he wants the government to provide health care to everybody. Um, yeah. The other thing that he said is like, we need to treat illegal immigration like a true uh, crime, and we need to start incarcerating these people for this. Yeah. Well, I have a problem. I have a Wait, problem with what? that. You're saying Even that we don't want them in, but when they get in, we need to put them in prison here. Then we're all still taking care of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I have. It a, doesn't make any sense. Even as somebody that doesn't want an open border, like I have issues with all of that. Mm -hmm. Like now, I do have real issues with the Biden administration's approach to this, which seems to be uh, will allow it to happen that way. Nobody can undo anything later. Like they're they're taking this position that's like, uh, the, the default is, well, these people will just be here. Yeah. Um, and you know, making a show like they're doing something about it, but what they're actually doing is, is permitting this to continue without any, any real oversight or restriction or anything at all. Yeah. Now, while I, I think that that is the long-term goal. Yeah is to have no restrictions yeah. on this. Yeah. Um, this is a, uh, I mean, frankly, it's kind of politically savvy, but um, it's, it's not the right way to, handle to, it. to get here. Yeah. Um, is to essentially, you know, have laws that you don't enforce. Well, that's, yeah. that's a problem of its own. Yeah. Um, and, and creates a lot of problems on its own. Yeah. Uh, selective enforcement of laws is no good. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I th think that it doesn't much matter because the whole idea of the rule of law is a myth anyway. Yeah. Intentionally because of things like this. Because though. of that, this, this attitude towards yeah. the law. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, uh, you know, I don't, oh, geez. Oh, it's your phone going off yeah, this time. I remember, man, I should have <laughs> turned that off. That was to remind me to take um, the raspberry syrup out of the fridge. Oh, yeah. And strain it. So we got to stop and do that? No, it's already done. <laughs> okay. I, I did it when I got home. All right. That's why That's why we tasted raspberry syrup oh, before. Okay. I didn't know if we tasted unstrained <laughs> raspberry syrup. No, no, no. Syrup. It's, it's, yeah. I, I, I did all of the things. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. That's the final version. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe not the final, final version, because I think next time I do it, I might make some changes. But. Yeah. That's the final version for that bottle. For this batch. Yeah. It's the it's the final version. Fair I enough. will improve right. going forward. Um now I lost what I was now talking. we have the now that we've had a complete aside. Yeah. <laughs> um I don't know, something about immigration. Yeah. I mean 
I don't know. Like, I don't know what the right answer is per se. I mean, mm-hmm. I know what the the actual right answer is, but from where we're at now, mm-hmm. I don't know what the right answer is. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'll freely admit that. Yeah, I just think that the the idea of cracking down on the border of strictly enforcing the border is is counterproductive for our long term goals. Yeah, and <clears throat> and I understand Dave Smith's point that people don't want an open borders policy. And like I said, yeah. I am happy to take some steps in between, yeah. but I think the, the, the step, you know, the <clears throat> more market based approach of just like having a reason to be here, yeah. um, you know, an invitation from a person or to come, you know, cause you have a job prepared. Yeah. And so I, I was actually talking to somebody else, um, about this recently and they're saying, well, you know, the, the thing that really concerns me is that we're not seeing families coming across the border. We're seeing young men. I'm yeah. like, yeah. That's who comes to work. Yeah, because and that and once again, a little bit of experience in this scenario in this mm-hmm. area, like they are, they're coming over to work, and then they're sending most of that money back home. Yeah, so that they can hopefully, in the long run, bring bring their everybody f- else home. home. But but, if, but, but if, even if not, they want to make the lives of the people that they've left behind better. Yeah, like I mean, that is the goal. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that that's good. And in terms of, you know, that, that kind of process of, well, a young men comes works, yeah. sends money back home until they can bring their family up or whatever. Yeah. Like that's a real common pattern within yeah. this country from legal citizens. Yeah. My parents were living in new Orleans and my dad moved to the U- to New York yeah. and was staying in hotels and was working until he could bring my mom up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> kind of how you have to do things sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so, and I'm simplifying that a little bit, I guess, but, but yeah, <laughs> but that's the basic idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I just, uh, I, I think that if the long term goal is to get government out of all of these things, because I, I think that you and I would agree and you can tell me if I'm wrong that if you remove government from this process, immigration is suddenly not a problem. Oh, I wholeheartedly agree with that. (laughs) Um, I mean, the the government is the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, and it's the root of why this is as jacked up and complicated as it is. Yeah. And the government doesn't handle anything very well. And I think that giving them more power over this thing just be it's the it's the ice ball effect yeah like they've already screwed it up so badly why would you think that the the answer for now even yeah is to give them more power over it yeah um it just seems to me to be counterproductive to our our actual like our real goals yeah yeah but at the same time the i i don't know i just can't get behind the i can't campaign for open borders in no, this I, scenario. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even ask you to. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to get down to the libertarian position. Yeah. Like the real, like the true libertarian position, I yeah. think here is that it would all be private property based. Yeah. And so, oh, absolutely. You know, people no, are I permitted on your property or, or they're not. And I, that is absolutely where I'm at. The, um, where, where me and you have the disagreement is in the in-between time. Yeah. Like, I mean, and that's, that's where we're different. And that, and that's completely fine. I like, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with that. Yeah. Um, um, but what I do want people to understand, libertarians to understand particularly, is that while it may not be good for us to, for me to be out there in the world, like if I was campaigning or something, shouting for open borders, yeah. um, that I, in fact, I would be pushing for this, like, uh, well, you know, you need an invitation yeah. thing. I think that that's a great step I think that if, step forward. as a libertarian, like mm-hmm. if you're going to, if you're running for office as a libertarian and this question starts coming up, I yeah. think that's the answer you give. Mm-hmm. I think, but I do want to make sure that, that libertarians understand the dangers of going out there and saying, yeah. we need to secure the border. We need to make sure that, you know, yeah. that we don't so have all this going too far on the other end. Because if you're, if you're advocating for a, uh, you know, more government regulation, more government legislation, more government enforcement. Yeah. That it is counterproductive to what we want. Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and so that's yeah. the main thing that I want people to understand why I am critical of the, of the position, yeah. um, of the border hawk position of the border hawk position. Yeah. No. And I agree with that. Like, I and especially from libertarians. And that, that's yeah. why. Yeah. Is because I think that you're you're creating a monster that you can't, yeah, you know, you can't put a, yeah, a genie you can't put back in the bottle. There, maybe there you yeah. go. That's what I was going for. <laughs> Cat out of the back, whatever. Yeah. Um. And 
it's it's also it seems to me to be an overreaction anyway. Yeah. Um, because like the the people that are actual problems that are coming across the border, there's not that many. Yeah. I, I mean, there's well, and the, now, and, the, and, and I, the truth is, is the ones that are are going to come through either way. Yeah. Like you're never going to get. Yeah. It's like it's never you know gonna, keep uh, adding additional gun laws and think that there's not going to be any more criminals with guns if you do that. Yeah. Well, no, the, the criminals are going to do what the criminals do. Exactly. Um. And, uh, and I know the old adage that, you know, one bad apple spoils the bunch or spoils the barrel or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, but the answer isn't to cut down the tree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like the yeah. tree is still producing <laughs> a lot of good apples. Exactly. Um, and to me, the border hawk position, that's what it's doing. It's cutting down the tree because on the whole, yeah. immigration is good yeah. for us economically in this country. It, yeah. it generates more wealth. Yeah. Um, and even you know, if they send some of it back home. Even if they send some of it back home. Yeah. I Absolutely. Mean, it does. It's because still, they're still producing the labor. Exactly. You're still getting the good part of it. <laughs> yeah. You're getting the product. They're sending the worthless paper back. Exactly. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, I'm actually less concerned about the southern border than I am the northern border. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, in, in terms oh, no, of the gonna, politics They're going to import a lot of liberalism from up there is that where you're going yeah socialism socialism yeah. that's yeah i yeah. guess that's really what i mean um, yeah i mean the you know the uh central and um and south american cultures are on the whole actually pretty conservative yeah and i think that like for those of you that are opposed to immigration because of the political shift yeah that they're coming in and voting for democrats well, they're probably coming in and voting for Democrats because right now they see the Democrats as the biggest asset to getting to allowing them to bring the rest of their family yeah. and friends up. Whereas the the Republicans are standing against that. Yeah. But like a lot of the people All that cross the southern border, you have to do is blur that like, line a little bit as far as what the Republicans, how the Republicans are acting at the border. Yeah, is blur that line a little bit, and they can shift to the Republicans just as quick. Because honestly, like where, where you're going with this, you're mm -hmm. right. Is politically, they're closer aligned to the Republicans yeah, than culturally. they are to, culturally. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're just generally like mostly Catholic, yeah. um, mostly conservative, family oriented culture. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I've it's, seen that is about as far from the Democrats at this point as you can be. Yeah. And I, I've seen, um, you know, statistics on, uh, like children of immigrants, I guess you'd say. So yeah. is that second generation in this country? I think so. Yeah. Um, so second generation, the first generation born in this country. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, yeah that they tend to actually shift more conservative in their politics. Yeah. So the recent immigrants are, uh, tend to shift left and the, those that have been here for a generation tend to shift right. Yeah. So watch what you wish, wish for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. all right. Well, I've beaten that horse to death. Yeah. It was a good conversation, though. I feel like, like I say, I feel like we finally came to a reasonable resolution here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, like I said, I I would absolutely be on board with the sponsorship program because that yeah. seems like the market response. Yeah, I mean, that, that um, seems like the true libertarian position mm -hmm. to me. And uh, But you just, you got to remember this country was built on immigration. Yeah. Uh, immigration is a huge part of the reason that we have the wealth that we still manage to yeah. Hang on and to. I've, I've, I've never considered myself to be like anti-immigrant. Like we were talking at the beginning about Jeff mm -hmm. Sessions. Like I never was for Jeff Sessions' yeah. um, take on that. Like it just it always was wrong to me. Yeah. So, um. And I want uh, libertarian border hawks to understand what they're advocating for, really. Yeah. Like the long-term implications of what they're advocating for. Yeah. Uh, because especially that enforcement issue, I think, is often forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, you're right. And, uh, and then of course the, the same message that we we're having on a lot of these things recently, none of this is the immigrants fault. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like don't, you know, don't hold it against the immigrants. They're just seeking a better life. Oh, absolutely. And even the deal with the schools and the hospitals and stuff, even, mm -hmm. even though that like jacks the system up so much, a system mm -hmm. that's already broken by government, it's still not the people that are there's fault yeah. per se. I mean, I mean, I guess ultimately you blame them for coming over here, mm -hmm. but well, I see more of an impact on the healthcare system because yeah. as we said earlier, um, 
most it's it's not it's mostly young men, not families with kids that are coming across. Yeah. I mean, well, there are families with kids coming say, across. I was going to say, there's definitely families coming yeah, across. Yeah, no, there, but, there are. Yeah. But, but I get what you're saying, though, overall, like, yeah. if you just drill uh, Much down. more restraint on the healthcare system than on the education system, I would think. Yeah. But, um, you know, the other issue of that is that there is, like, we have, we have forgotten that there is private charity. Yeah. Because the government has taken over so many things. There is private charity. Church groups can put together little schools for illegal immigrants. No. Um, you know, doctors can volunteer time uh, at, at free healthcare clinics for immigrants and, and so forth. People no. that are going f- through nursing school or whatever might want to get just like a little extra time, make sure that they understand what they're doing. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of ways that this could be handled privately. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And and I think that just the fact that government provides these services and has for so long, people forget that, you know, they can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you've got the government, there's a crutch to lean on. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, the biggest biggest problem with the healthcare system in this country is that the government is involved at all. Yeah. Oh, I mean, absolutely. We, we saw it absolutely during COVID, during, you know, that there was such a strong centralization and um, central government control over what was permitted. Yeah. And that's... That's an understatement. Not, yeah, yeah, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, it, and it, it wasn't until um, the uh, inception of, like, Medicare... Um, and then the, the involvement of government has just grown from there. And uh, you've said, uh, several times that a huge part of it is that the government putting the responsibility to provide health insurance on employers. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it used to be a perk. Now it's a requirement and, and the cost and the quality of the cost has gone up and the quality has gone down. Yep. Overall, absolutely. And I just want to say that I wrote a um, an editorial when I was like 21 or 22, and I was working in the medical field. Yeah. Uh, and this was at the time when um, when Clinton was in office, and they were pushing for the universal health care thing oh, then. Yeah. Or actually, yeah. I guess Hillary was pushing Hillary, for the I was gonna say, yeah. universal <laughs> health care thing. Um, and, uh, and I predicted exactly this. Yeah. Like, this is going to be the result. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty easy to see coming. And mm -hmm. honestly, like we've got test cases for it all over the world. (laughs) Yeah. Like it's, and that's what always kills me with stuff like this. We think we've got this like original idea, like, Mm -hmm. and then like you start looking through history, there's very few original ideas out there. Well, people think very highly of the um, national healthcare uh, service in the UK. Yeah. But like, go read up on the current state of the NHS. Yeah, I mean, it's, like it worked for a while, but <laughs> well, and these it's things, not really working anymore. And these ten, things tend to do. I mean, like communism's mm-hmm. the same way; it works great for a couple of years. Yeah, you until know? you run out of wealth. Well, exactly, because that's <laughs> what you do is you're you're draining the wealth of your country when mm-hmm. you do that. Yeah. So, um, so you were talking about enforcement as far as the immigration thing. Mm-hmm. Something else I wanted to kind of mention. I don't know how much you got to look into it. I didn't get to look into it as much as I would have liked. Yeah, but. Talking about enforcement being the problem as far as being anti-immigration, um, this E-Verify thing that they're trying to pass oh, is, yeah. um, and, and that really, this, it, it's really bad. <laughs> like, it's it's definitely not what we would want um, as libertarians or as anybody living in this country. It's, it's a, it's, this is a gateway to a big problem. Yeah. This is the next, this is the next attempt after the, um, um, the, was the vaccine pass. Yep. Yep. All right. So the vaccine passport didn't work. They didn't, they didn't manage to get us all registered with that. So this is the new attempt. This is a way to try to get 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 everybody in the system. And then, and so right now the idea is, is, well, everybody has to register into the system. So you can, when you Mm -hmm. go to apply somewhere, you can work. Yeah. Um, but this can just as easy, and, and it's an attack on immigra- immigrants because immigrants won't be able to register in the system, and then so they won't be able. The idea is, is well, they won't come here, they won't be able to work, which mm-hmm. we know that won't work because they'll just go under the table. Yeah, I mean that's Actually, basically they're, what they're doing. They're anyway. also contributing to the uh, um, creation of false documents uh, market yeah. here in this country. Well, that too. <laughs> yeah, the the industry of forgery. Yeah. Um, I have seen some really good looking social security cards. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, when I, there was a place that I was working, um, years ago where uh, we did loans and, um, 
there was a confusion one day because uh, somebody called in, gave the social security number, and the loan that was pulled up was not their loan. Yeah. And it turns out that somebody else was had a, a forged social security card that they were using <laughs> yeah. that they had used to get a loan. They'd been paying the loan all along. Yeah. They, just, they had know. no intention. It wasn't like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was fraud, but they intended to pay it. But when the, <laughs> sa- when the person who actually was the owner of that social security number tried to make a loan with the same business. Yeah. They already had one. <laughs> yeah. Things got a little confusing. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I actually took that call. That was yeah. a strange day. <laughs> it sounds like it. Um, no, but this that you verify thing is bad. Like we, yeah. uh, it's it. I well, it, it's the it's a step towards the implementation of like a social credit score type thing. Yeah, because yeah. they say right now, well, you know, it'll only be used when you, um, like an i nine, I guess. Yeah, same type tool. Uh, you know, think. but you already have to do an i nine anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it'll be, you know, once the database is created, like all the little tags that you can add on to it yep. to control whether somebody can be employed or not. Yeah. This is this is not a power we want to just will, willy nilly turn over to a government that we yeah. already know we can't trust. Yeah. So if you don't get the right vaccines, you can't be employed. If you exactly. hold the wrong political views, you can't be employed. Yeah. Um, th- Remember these that post are... you made on social media two yeah. years ago? <laughs> and well, it, we found it. <laughs> it. And it sounds far-fetched, but there's a lot of things that 10 years ago sounded far-fetched. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the caution I would tell everybody is, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. It it is Because it, it does. It seems far fetched when you just start like talking about it, mm-hmm. but it's not as far out of the realm as you think. Well, I'm hoping that the hook there for people is the, well, if you don't get the right vaccine, because they actually did that two yeah, years they ago. They did that, yeah. You know how close I was to having to get that thing? Mm-hmm. Actually, I say having to get that thing. I never would have done it. I would have just... I would have been destitute in the gutter before I had done it, but yeah. Well, we saw um, my old friend uh, earlier this week. Yep, we were in uh, who? Yeah, I hadn't seen him in a few years, and in the meantime, he had a heart attack. Yep. And then he was explaining to me that um, that he worked in healthcare. Yep. And that he was forced to get the vaccine or lose his job. Yep. And it was a good job. Yeah. And, I and didn't he had a lose wife it. and a kid in the way. Yep. And so he got the vaccine, and his doctor told him. That yeah. it was the vaccine that caused it, that, uh, that was part of the reason he had the heart attack. Yeah, it caused yeah. clotting around his heart, yeah. and he had a heart attack. Yeah. So I mean, this is like I say, and, and he can't go back to anybody on that. No, he's just you know, I mean, I mean, horrible. he's on disability, so it's like yeah. Fortunately, yeah. I mean, but at, at the same time, for a but situation, somebody should be that, able to he should be able to hold somebody liable, and he can't. That's the other side of it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. No. Craziness, man. Yeah. So this was not that long ago. Well, yeah. I, I and, like and This is why I'm, I'm well, like, I'm really trying to latch onto that. Well, and that's the reason that this <laughs> verify thing is so dangerous. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that. after what we've lived through the past few years, yeah. like, we should be mindful of things like this and mm-hmm. not just, like, let this go through. Yeah. And they, yeah, they connect it to your CBDC. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then the government controls all your money and whether you can work. Yeah, there you go. Just press a button and turn off your credit card. Yeah, it's real easy. Just put this app on your phone. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that's how it would be sold. Oh yeah, and 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 there's plenty of people that'll buy into that and be mm-hmm. like, oh man, that's that's I can so just con- wave my phone over the little checkout thing and just so walk convenient. Right out. Yeah. yeah. And so. you know, then it'll be the chip in your arm and the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> the forehead. I, I like the forehead. Yeah. <laughs> just stick your forehead up to the <laughs> to the light. You know, wave your hand <laughs> over the thing. Anyway. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, we're running a little long, but I do want to hit a couple of foreign policy okay. things before we, before we get out of here. All right. Um, so the U S is trying to place air defenses in Guam. Oh yeah, that's right. We talked about that. Yeah. I can, uh, when you said foreign policy, I was like, I don't have any foreign policy in mind, but I forgot we did talk about that. Um, and then they're also trying to sign a defense cooperation treaty with Papua New, New Guinea, which is north of Australia. Okay. Um, Guam is uh, east of Indonesia. Yeah. Roughly. Okay. Um, yeah. It's out in the Pacific. Both of these places are a hell of a lot closer to China than they are to us. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and that is the purpose. Like the, the idea is to have quote unquote defenses. Yeah. Around China, just in case. Yeah. You know. 
China in, wants in to do something. These defenses in the South China Sea. <laughs> yeah, in their own territory, in their yeah. own neighborhood. Put yeah. it that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when you say these defenses, I'm gonna just kind of verify these are the ones that could very easily be swapped over to offensive. Well, nobody knows the details of the agreement with Papua New, New Guinea, okay. and and actually that one may not happen because Biden canceled his trip um, uh, over there. Presumably, so that he can meet with Republicans on how they can raise the debt ceiling. That's yeah. something else so, that we, so we talk so, about. So we make sure you know that we we don't collapse our government here. Yeah, that wouldn't happen anyway. But <laughs> still, though, <laughs> and it's not like that debt ceiling won't be raised. But really, people start need to start concerning themselves with how high that debt is. Yeah, I know we don't want to get into the debt ceiling yeah. thing, but I I do want to just mention this since we're there, mm-hmm. the fact that. Like I know that this is a game that gets played every few years. Like this is yeah. this is nothing new. So I'm not trying to act like it is, but it does seem like the voices out there against raising it mm-hmm. are more serious this time. Yeah, about, well, but they can't. They can't do it. They, they can't not raise the ceiling. Yeah, I mean, there's I mean, no way it won't be raised. I agree. I, I'm not. I'm not like. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's not going to get raised. All I'm saying is, is that the. The voices in opposition, even Trump floating it out there that, you mm-hmm. know, oh, you know, it may be better to do it now than wait. Yeah. Like, well, that, I mean, that's actually that's a, a strong a, argument. Yeah. That's a, that's a serious <laughs> argument. Like you're going to have an economic collapse eventually. And the higher that debt is when it happens, the worse it'll be. Yeah. So it's just interesting to me following it this past couple of weeks that mm-hmm. there is, there does seem to be a serious conversation around that. Yeah. Although I'm with you, it's not going to happen. Yeah, but it's interesting that that serious conversation. Well, it, the interesting thing to me is that that while they like they don't actually ever make any serious attempts to rein in the spending. No, no, and this will be no different. No, like, I mean, I'll, yeah. But uh, anyway, so anyway, yeah, gonna... Biden canceled this trip to Papua New, New Guinea. It was going to be the first visit from a president, maybe ever or something. Like they, really? um, they declared a holiday for the day that Biden was going to be there, and they were going to sign this treaty. That oh, man. Is, how is... disappointing can that be for well, the people there? That he just like, oh, well, maybe you're going to have to find another day on the calendar to put your little holiday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I think it may have created enough of an offense. That, an insult. An insult that they're that, not going to... That they won't sign this treaty. Also, wow. the treaty's been kind of secret, so the opposition party, um, they're saying... It's been pretty hard on it. Yeah. They're like, well, now you got to show. Yeah. Like, he's not even going to be here. Now you got to show us all what this thing is going to be that you wanted to sign. Yeah. Um, now we've got the time. Show us what's in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I, I don't know that it'll actually happen. Um, as for Guam... Uh, Guam's almost certainly going to get the air defenses. And yes, it's the same Aegis Mark, whatever. I forget yeah. the number. Um, yeah. But it's the same uh, Aegis missile defense systems that they have, like in Poland, yeah. that can be swapped out for um, nuclear tip Tomahawk missiles essentially overnight. Yeah. It, it's. It, it's so crazy to me that we want to play this game with Russia and with China yeah. to just fooling around in their backyard. Yeah. And it's well, and that's is, the important point, I think, is, yeah. is that like we keep talking about, you know, aggressive China, aggressive China, aggressive China. Yeah. They're not putting stuff all around the US. It's the US that's putting stuff in in their backyard. Exactly. Like it's, it's if, just if, such a dangerous game. If the if this fight is going to be fought, it's going to be fought off the coast of China. Now who's the aggressor? Yeah. Well, and that's just it. And not that I want to have that fight here, mm-hmm. but if if we have that fight, to think that it won't come to this country, I think is naive. Well, um, you may be right about that. I mean, I, I think that, uh, well, I, they do have something like 300 thermonuclear missiles. Yeah. I'm not even saying if it goes, specifically if it goes nuclear, but I mean, mm-hmm. if if you're talking about how World War Three will be fought, yeah. To think that the U.S. will end up coming out of it the way we did in World War II, yeah, I just I don't buy it. No, I mean I I mean when you talk about like countries being rebelized, mm-hmm. this will be one of them. Yeah, 
Well, I mean, what I've always said about the, you know, the China, China only has 300 nuclear missiles. Yeah. That's what people say. Like, yeah. oh, well, we've got thousands. They've only got 300 or 400, yeah. whatever it happens to be now. <laughs> it only and takes like, a handful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so let's say that we stop, let's say even that we stopped 99% yeah. of those nuclear missiles from hitting the U.S. Yeah. What three or four cities are you willing to sacrifice? Exactly. Like, I mean, it's just that simple. <laughs> oh. So, I don't know. It, it That's, I mean, I guess that's the biggest thing I want to drive home to people is to, to just understand, like, when we're talking about these, this foreign policy stuff and the stuff mm-hmm. that's, that right now is going on way over there, mm-hmm. when, when it really hits the fan, it's not going to be way over there anymore. Yeah. And that's something and that. And even if it's way over there, you're going to know people that have to go over there. Well, yeah. Well, that's the other side of it. Even mm-hmm. if we were to be lucky enough that these wars are fought on other people's soil, mm-hmm. it's going to be our kids going over there. Yeah. Like, I mean, there, there's no avoiding that. So, I don't know. Uh, that's so, not the doom and gloom I want to close this podcast I know. out I, now on. Now I'm trying to think <laughs> of a positive note. So we did want to um, mention just kind of briefly tonight and then maybe get into it on the next podcast. Um, about the the Durham report that came out a couple of days ago, recently. Yeah. Um, I hadn't got a chance to look that far into it yet, but it it seems to confirm everything that we already knew, <laughs> as far as I can tell. Yeah, I, I think the the most important point there um, that I've seen so far uh, is that um, John Brennan, who thinks that libertarians are terrorists. Yeah. Uh, John Brennan. Um, briefed Obama on Russian intelligence that the Hillary Clinton campaign was planning to use a fake um, entanglement between the Trump campaign and Russia to distract from um, her issues with the um, uh, classified documents on the private server. Yeah, yeah. And then that happened. Yeah. And a bunch of the FBI guys that were interviewed by Durham said that they had no idea that they had not been made, and higher-ups, yeah. had not been made aware of this intelligence, and that if they had been made aware of this intelligence, they would have handled it differently. They would have handled it with a little bit more skepticism. Yeah. Um, they might be lying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't really know. <laughs> but uh, I think that that's... Um, it, is, it is clear that the U.S. government, including the... Ob- including president Obama was aware that this was a hoax from the very beginning. Yeah. But that didn't or, stop oh, on not aware that it was a hoax, but aware that it was likely a hoax, yeah. I guess at least. Oh yeah. I mean, they knew what the origin was like, mm-hmm. it's not like they, you know, yeah. trusted Hillary Clinton to be telling the truth. I mean, who would do that? Right? Yeah. And the <laughs> FBI paid that guy, uh, Christopher Steele, a bunch of, this is another thing from the report yeah. paid Christopher Steele a bunch of money to provide evidence of anything that was claimed in the Steele dossier. Yeah. Of course. He and got do nothing. It. Yeah. He couldn't, couldn't produce it, but they've continued this all this time. Yeah. Well, and, and I mean the, they kind of won the war on that because yeah. this bogged down Trump's entire presidency. Now, mm-hmm. whether if you were for Trump or against Trump, he was elected like I mean, he yeah. he had I mean he sh- he should have been given the opportunity to to run his presidency without having this type of fight on his hands. Well, and it it led um, really directly to this confrontation in Ukraine. Yeah, uh, because Trump was being charged every day with being a Kremlin asset, he was going out of his way to um, to prove that wrong. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. he's given arms to Ukraine, which even Obama wouldn't do. Obama was the, his presidency is the one that launched the coup in 2014 (laughs) in Ukraine. But even Obama's uh, administration wouldn't give them weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then there were all the sanctions that Trump placed on Russia and, um, it just escalated this thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so now here we are now, this is where we can close on something positive, I suppose. All right, let's do it. Is that there? Um, there is increasing, uh, an increasing international push to bring an end to the war in Ukraine. Oh, really? To bring a ceasefire. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, they were talking about a ceasefire again and, um, Anthony Blinken got out there and said that we, the United States doesn't want a ceasefire. Yeah. They backed off of that a little bit. 
probably for public relations reasons, because right. it looks really bad for yeah. China to say we're we need to bring an end to this war in the USA. We don't want the war to end. Yeah. <laughs> um, Exp- yeah. Like, it's just hard to to understand how I mean, I just it blows my mind how yeah. bad a- that- a- uh, Anthony Blinken, the secretary of state, the chief diplomat. Yeah. For the United States is we don't want an end to this war. Yeah. Anyway, and it, it's frustrating. I just want to say it's just frustrating because like whether you believe in the status paradigm or not, like mm-hmm. those people still represent us. Yeah. Like that's that's what our side is saying or, or was saying at that time at least, mm-hmm. and that's just embarrassing, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, they've backed off of it now. Um, uh, a group of African nations has also said that they are they they want to submit a a peace plan for Ukraine and Russia and that Ukraine and Russia have both um, shown an interest in engaging in talks about this and so yeah. on. So, so the good news is that there is increasing international support to bring it into the war. Yeah. And well, it needs to come to an end because it's been nothing but destructive. Cause it's time for us to go after China now. Right. <laughs> right. We got to <laughs> redirect our, I mean, and we've, we've sent so many weapons and, and ammunition into Ukraine that we're, you know, it's going to take us a couple of years to build back up so that yeah. we can fight China. Exactly. And, and I, I say that, like, I, I pray that that's not what happens here, but <laughs> you know, that's what the pivot is. Like we yeah. just laid out earlier in the podcast, the pivot, like yeah. that was so. Yep. 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 That'll be even worse. Yeah. There's a lot of Chinese. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> so. We we outnumber Russians. Um, yeah, we're like uh, less than a third the number of Chinese. Yeah, I think good. I think less than a quarter actually. Uh, anyway, um, but yes, at least there's there's been more of a push to bring it into this. It it seems like it it probably can't go on a whole lot longer. Well, good. That's that's definitely fingers crossed. Yeah, it's definitely a positive to close on. Yep. So, um, let's see. Next, next week's w- a little dicey. Next week's dicey. Yeah, yeah. it is um, Memorial Day. No, is- Labor Day weekend. Yes. Labor. That's, that's what we're I get those two mixed is. up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Thursday's out for us because we've got a graduation to attend. That's right. Um, Friday could be doable. Saturday's no good for me. Okay. Uh, Saturday is no good for me either. So I guess it'll have to be Friday. It'll have to be Friday. It'll be Friday or bust. Yep. Or Sunday. Possibly. I can, Sunday's dicey for me, but I can generally do Sundays. Okay. But we need, we need to go hard for Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Like we had to go hard for today this week. So, um, and we made it and we did it. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Congratulations. Well, uh, we'll, we'll be back next week. Um, In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Uh, Like and share, comment, subscribe. I already said subscribe. Um, Tell your friends and all that other stuff. All of these things really do help us out, um, help get this, you know, this message in front of more people. Absolutely. Um, And that's what we want. That's the whole goal of this. Although we would do it even if nobody was listening, probably. Absolutely. But. Pretend you didn't hear me say that, though. <laughs> and try listen. and get more people listening. <laughs> exactly. And uh, so we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.